Welcome, friends. Welcome. This is Love Clinic for the Family. And today I am going to talk about seven tips to express love to your husband. Seven tips to express love to your husband. This is my eighth topic on this series, which has 13 topics. Love clinic. Yes. Think about it. We need a love clinic so that at least we can attend to some of these problems that come. And this is love clinic for the family. We have also love clinic for young people. That's a whole series with 13 topics. And we have love clinic for on communication. Just imagine, yes, love clinic on communication. And we have also love clinic on sexual behavior from Ellen G. White's perspective. This is exciting. Seven tips. Let's look at some of, let's go through some of these seven tips. But just before we do that, I want to share with you this text from the Bible. This is very powerful for me. Remember, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 24 and 21 up to 24. Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm reading from NIV. I read, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That was verse 21. Verse 22, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the savior. Verse 24. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. In everything. Well, that's powerful. I want to talk about, just give you seven tips briefly. Seven tips, yes? And as I do that, I think I want to ask for God to guide me so that I say the right words at the right time. Allow me to pray, Heavenly Father, as we cover this topic, just giving each other tips on how to express love to husbands. Help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tip number one, do not sanction your husband in the bedroom. <laughs> okay, yes. Do not sanction your husband in the bedroom. That's first tip. And you know, the book of um, First Corinthians chapter 7, it does mention that, hey, you women, you have no control over your body, but the husband has. And also it says, hey, husband, you have no control over your body, but the woman has control. So what does that mean? Excessive? No. Self-control is still required. The principle of, uh, you know, we have this principle of we should agree. We should agree. We should discuss. It's not like somebody just comes and says, hey, please, and uh, forces their way. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not the thing. That's not biblical. Well, of course, we know that m some women do give their body and they agree to anything, thinking that maybe if they do that, then they get more love. That's what some women think, that the more you accept, the more you surrender, the more you get more love from your husband. 
I want you to know that, well, we are human beings. This is not about transforming marriage into servitude. You know, marriage is not a place where sex addicts, people who are addicted to sex, can actually just do whatever they want. Human beings have fantasies. And some men can have fantasies. And at times it's not possible to satisfy all those fantasies. So I'm saying, hey, you know, when you are dealing with an addict, no matter how much you surrender yourself, um, things may never work in your favor. Somebody who cheats will continue to cheat. They are addicted. They have a problem. That problem is not going to be solved by surrendering too much. Anyway, this topic is so, so sensitive because my, you know my audience is mixed. Those of you who might want to do more, we have prepared extensive uh, discussions. In fact, I've prepared a whole course with 67 lectures on this topic about sexuality and things like that, things to do with the bedroom. That was tip number one. Tip number two, be your husband's first line of defense. I want to tell you, ladies, those of you who are listening, husbands can give you a very big surprise. Your husband is capable of pulling out several shocks in your marriage many times, maybe at times repeatedly. Husbands, not all husbands can be like Joseph. All right? I think as, as wives, we need to remember that we did not marry angels. We married human beings. And human beings are subjective to failures. That's why we are human. I am not justifying wrong behavior or toxic behaviors by husbands. No, that's not what I'm, what I'm saying. But I'm just reminding you that in a relationship, one of you might have problems. And when that happens, when that happens, the wife should be the first line of defense. The problem is some women, some wives, once the husband makes mistakes, they are the ones to announce to the whole world, to broadcast to the parents, to the family, to the family members, to children, to everyone, friends, you know, with social media these days. Oh, look at what my husband has done. And the whole world comes to know from the wife. No, that's not the role. He is wounded. He has messed up, and these people who mess up, it doesn't matter what position they have in life, whether in the church or whatever, men can mess up at times. If they do, it's the devil. They've, they've been attacked by the devil. Oh, you say, ah, no, don't say devil, devil all the time. These people, why has they, 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 they choose to do it. It's true. They make choices to do it. We are responsible for our choices. Yes, actions and non-actions, we are responsible for those. There is a, a whole, I developed a whole course also on, uh, you know, toxic behaviors. What are the causes of toxic behaviors? I know you will rush to say, hey, no, they have decisions to make. Yes, we should make decisions. That's why God gives us the power of choice. But when we fall, how do you do it? I am saying to you as women, you need to choose whether you are going to side with the devil to embarrass him further. Or you are there to say, okay, come here. Address his wounds, spiritual wounds. Help him to recover. Cover him up. So the choice is yours. Make things worse 
by throwing him to the devil or praying for him and supporting him. And of course, making him see sense. Oh, let's go to the next. Next tip. Collaborate in setting up boundaries and also even respecting those boundaries. There are many areas of relationships where boundaries are required. Without boundaries, relationships deteriorate to become very toxic. Boundaries are very important. So I am saying to women, if you want to demonstrate love to your husband, collaborate, insist, encourage that you have boundaries and agree on the boundaries. And then, of course, insist that they should be respected once those boundaries have been set. You say, well, but then we are married. How do we have boundaries? Whether you are married or not, boundaries are required. Marriage does not neutralize individuality. Boundaries are required when it comes to areas like accessing social media, you know, mobile phones, social media. You need to agree on the boundaries. Some people don't want to share. I do share with my wife. We, do, we share. We, we, we have no problem with passwords. We don't have any problem. But that's not, I don't want to use that as standard. It can be not be forced on couples and those people in relationships. When it comes to world standards, you know it very well. You have no right to other people's privacy. There is still privacy even if you are married. But as Christians, you might want to approach it differently. That's okay. You need to discuss. But the whole thing is you need to make up boundaries and agree on those boundaries. Yes, not only there. But you also need boundaries when it comes to f management of finance. Let's agree. How do we manage finance? Who manages the finance? Who controls? And how is, how, who decides what should be what sh the investments that we make? Just agree on how to do it. Those, you are already making boundaries. Not only that. What about management of in-laws? Should the husband support his parents and relatives, the wife's parents and relatives are not supported or some, something like that. How do you manage in-laws? You have to have boundaries agreed as a couple. You know what? Let's look next one. Influence, next, bound, next tip, influence children to respect their father. Oh my goodness. You know, some people were thinking that we were going to talk tips like kiss him tw twice a day, three times a day, four times. No, no. That kisses can be given, kisses can be given to anyone, even people who are not loved. We are not talking about those things. We are talking of things of substance that really demonstrate and also is an expression of love. Respect your husband, not, not just that, but you need to influence children to respect their father. That's the critical role of a wife. Well, listen, here are some things that may lead children to have no respect of their father, which are done by women which you might want to review and see whether you are also doing this, number one. Always criticizing and complaining about the poor job of the husband, the poor income of the husband, in the hearing of the children. Always telling the children, or, you know, complaining and the children are hearing it. That's a problem, you know. Always taking, talking, talking about the poor education of their father. Always criticizing and complaining about the fact that their father is reckless. Yes, has no morals. Your father has no morals. Is an embarrassment. 
and they're saying this in the hearing of the children. They lose respect. Always mobilizing children in opposing the father's plans and uh, decisions. Shoot them down. You mobilize children so that you, you defeat the father. They will lose respect for him. Spoiling the children with gifts, you know, in order to become the favorite parent. At times, children will go to the father and ask the father, say, I don't have money, but the mother may have money, and the mother takes some money and gives to the children. You are buying favors. And you tell the children, don't tell your father that I gave you. <laughs> and so the children always, when they want something like that, a gift, money, whatever it is, you buy them. You buy them mobile phone. You say, I've decided to buy this mobile phone for you, but use it uh, wisely. <laughs> you, you are the one. You are the one. You want children to say, yes, mommy. Yes, it's mommy. My mother is very understanding. My father doesn't understand, man. <laughs> What are you doing? Disrespect. Always confiding in the children, you know, confiding in the children that the mother is the breadwinner. I am the one, you know what, in this family. It's my money. My salary is higher than your father's. I'm the breadwinner here. They lose respect. Opposing children or even discouraging children from supporting their father. Because you tell them, if you give your father money, he start misbehaving. Oh my goodness. And also complaining about the father's relatives and the children are hearing. Failure even to mobilize the children so that they can also celebrate their father's birthday or whatever it is. You don't mobilize them, you just leave them like that. And all this can cause children to disrespect their father. Do not spare. The next tip, never spare your husband from discipline. Oh yeah, my goodness, what is this now? Yes, husband needs to be disciplined. When a husband does something wrong, don't fear. You need to stand up and discipline. I'm not talking about fighting. Discipline is not about beating a person. There are many methods of discipline. Remember what the Bible says. God says, those whom I love, I discipline. Yes, read the book of Hebrew. Those I love, I discipline. If you love your husband, discipline your husband. <laughs> yes, correct him. Point out that this is not proper. When he has messed up, you should not just be quiet and fear that perhaps... No, let's, let's be quiet, otherwise you become violent. No, tell him that this is not proper, my husband. This is wrong. When he messes up, sting him like a scorpion. He should know that, hey, my goodness, hey, hey, what am I going to do? He should know that. But you need also to celebrate husband's achievements. And when you are stinging, you don't sting forever. Talk about it, complain about it, and then move on. Remember, he has messed up. You need to be like a loving wife. Go there. I like what mothers do. A child will be imprisoned after committing a terrible crime. They go there to the prison, give them gifts in the prison, and smile to them. This is what it is about. You discipline, but you show the other side of love. Do not rush to close the chapter, but don't continue to refer to the event again and again. Well, offer true forgiveness. Don't pretend. When you say, I have forgiven you, let it be forgiveness. Don't again tomorrow say, but I forgave you, you did this, and then I forgave you, but you, you are not, you know I forgave you, but you, you are just playing around with my forgiveness. Offer true forgiveness. When something wrong has been done and you forgive, let it be a serious forgiveness, true forgiveness, genuine forgiveness coming from the depth of your heart. If you are not yet ready to forgive, don't forgive. Don't pretend. 
to cover up. But by the time you decide to forgive, let it be true forgiveness. And when you are forgiven, by the way, confirm your forgiveness by, for example, if you have told them verbally, confirm it in writing. Forgiveness should be communicated clearly. Yes. If there are other people that you can send, fine. Send them. Trusted people. Forgiveness should be confirmed, should be communicated, and then move on. When another problem comes, that's a different thing. You deal with that problem, but don't keep on referring to the forgiveness. Become the main, become and remain irresistibly attractive. As I close, I want you to know that you as a wife, you need to become and remain irresistibly attractive. Yes. I don't know what it is that brought the two of you together. But whatever it is, you need to have improved on it. <laughs> That's right. Don't say, ah, oh, these days I'm no longer attractive, I'm now old, I've given birth and this. No, no, no. Beauty remains until you go to the grave. Elderly people are still beautiful in the eyes of their spouses. But you need to improve. The problem is you focus more on physical beauty. There are many elements, types of beauty, okay? We will discuss those in another lesson. The problem is you just focus on the skin. No, beauty is deeper than the skin. You may have wrinkles, but still beautiful in the eyes of your husband. You may have gained weight, but still remain beautiful in the eyes of the husband. Because you need to s develop other elements of beauty. Beauty is a package. Attraction is a package. You get attracted. This type of attraction, this type of attraction, it's not only physical attraction, but we have more than six types of attraction. You need to develop them. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, my time is up. I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you very much. We're just learning how to express love to each other. Help us. It's not easy. But it's possible because love is a plant. It can germinate, it can, be, it can grow, it can become a big plant, a big tree with shades for everybody. May our love be like that in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
aqui a camisa que Ah, I appreciate, I very much appreciate the comments and also the questions that you are asking. <laughs> very interesting. Thank you so much, those of you who have asked questions and comments. I want you to know, number one, that yes, uh, I think it's uh, my topic number nine, <laughs> where we talk about uh, how men can demonstrate their love, tips for men to demonstrate their love to uh, their wives. So some of the questions you have asked and comments will be addressed there. But let me also say, you know, you scold each other, you exchange bad words. We are going to be addressing those things. They are part of our presentations. You really cause your children to lose respect of both of you, all right? Because remember, you don't want to cause children to respect to you to lose respect of their mother. And right now we have been focusing on mothers. Don't cause your children to lose respect of their father. That means the way we respond to questions, the way we address conflict, the way we talk to each other, respect should always characterize our communications, the two of us husband and wife. And we don't have to go and lock ourselves in the bedroom. You know, also it's not advisable that when you have a conflict that has come up in the open and you say, ah, no, let's address that. Unless if, if it's, a, it's, it's, it's something else, very big issue. Otherwise, it is encouraged that husband and wife should engage in minor conflicts, in the hearing, and in the sight of their children, and deal with those conflicts, giving respect to each other while the children are hearing. It helps children to also develop skills and realize the importance of, of how to resolve conflicts without fighting. It's not about fighting. It means you are giving each other space. You are talking nicely. Your voices are still low. And you are doing this and this. Then other things you say, okay, we'll talk about it later. But conclude the issue. Talk about it. Close it. So that the children are learning how to resolve issues. And they will respect both the husband and the mother, I mean, the, the father and the mother, they have respect, respect and they know that, okay, when we have conflict ourselves, we should not fight. We should not deteriorate to fighting, but rather we should resolve it. But as I have already said, next, uh, another presentation that you will have. Remember, these are series. And this particular life clinic for family is 13 topics. This was only one of them. And so, yes, we will be addressing a lot of these in the other presentations as well. Otherwise, thank you very much. Yes, any other questions that you have? Thank you for your comments. Zoo. Mm -hmm. 
Zobuta na kona Mfule mfule ni bongu sekona le Just hold on. 